Hey everybody, it's La and Saibin, and we're looking at a sub $200 two-in-one today. This is the Toshiba Radius 11, and it's kind of unusual actually to see a touchscreen laptop under 200 bucks from a major manufacturer, so uh, here you go. And this is a two-in-one, so you can put it into a couple of different modes if you wish. You can you know, flip the keyboard over like so and have the screen uh, front and center. It'll uh, switch itself into tablet mode if you configure it that way. Uh, you can put it into tent mode, of course, like you can do on many other two-in-ones, and you can also uh, fold the screen back here and get tablet mode too. It weighs about 2.9 pounds. It's about 1.3 kilograms. So a little bit heavier than, of course, a tablet might be and a little bit unwieldy to hold, but uh, the keyboard will disable itself once that screen flips around and you can uh, hold it and use it like a tablet if you ever wanted to do that. So that's pretty uh, helpful there. And typically we see these designs in more expensive machines, which is kind of nice to see here. I picked this one up for $199 off the Toshiba store uh, based on a viewer's suggestion. Uh, Toshiba has no financial relationship with this channel. No one's paying me to make this video. Uh, and uh, all the opinions you're about to see are my own. And I'm the only one who sees these videos before they get uploaded. So I just wanted to uh, make my usual disclaimers there. So this is powered by an Intel N3050 Celeron, just like every other 2016 model year sub $200 PC we've looked at this year. Two gigabytes of RAM, non-upgradable, 32 gigabyte eMMC uh, hard drive or solid state drive or whatever you want to call it, uh, also not upgradable. So this is what you see is what you get, just like many of the other sub $200 PCs we've seen. There is a version of this for a little bit more with four gigabytes of RAM and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Uh, this one is the least expensive one because again, that is what we look at on the, on the channel here, the least expensive ones we can get. 1366 by 768, touch screen of course. And actually what's been nice as I've been playing with it is that the screen doesn't move around too much. It's pretty solid here, even though it can fold all the way down and backwards. Uh, when you're tapping on it, it doesn't just give way. It actually has some resistance to it, as you can see. So a uh, pretty decent design here, again, for uh, 200 bucks. I'm not too uh, unhappy about that. Now, how do they get uh, a sub $200 touchscreen PC? Well, you load it up with junkware, Wild Tangent, Dropbox, eBay, Groupon, uh, Insteon, whatever that is. Uh, the, there's the photo director and the power director, kind of the entry level photo and video editing applications, which of course will prompt you to buy the full version as you're playing around with it. McAfee Antivirus. Uh, we even have this other one here. This is like some kind of fake app store from uh, Wild Seed or something like that. It's called the App Explorer, which I don't suggest you use because of course uh, Windows has their own app store. But of course everybody's paying to get uh, your eyeballs on this laptop, which is why uh, they're able to hit the price point. And if just having things on screen isn't enough, you'll get an ad in the box for a uh, Blu-ray from, from the Fantastic Four here, uh, $3 off if you want a coupon. So uh, that's all the stuff that comes loaded on here, and that is what you'll see uh, when you get it. So just be prepared for that. Now, in addition to the junkware, they also shave some cost off on the batteries. This battery doesn't last all that long. Uh, in my testing, it's about five hours or so. Uh, we've seen longer battery life out of some of the competing machines at the $200 price point. Uh, so if you're into battery life, this one is probably not going to do it for you. I'm also not fond of the keyboard either. The keys are tiny. Uh, the travel on them isn't so great. It really doesn't feel that nice to type on. I had a hard time uh, typing fast on it. Uh, the Dell and the HP, uh, both of the 2016 models, the HP Stream 11 and the Dell 3000 that we looked at, uh, both had much better keyboards than this one does. Although I do like the trackpad, even though it's a traditional button trackpad, uh, it actually feels pretty nice, uh, pretty solid as a result because it's not a click pad that gets squishy. Uh, you can tap to click if you want. Uh, so just keep in mind the, the keyboard really is not so great, nor is the battery life on here. On this side, you've got your power jack here, your power button, HDMI out for plugging in an external display, USB 3.0, a SD card slot, but you will not uh, use it to augment your storage because the card will stick out of the side there a little bit. So uh, that's uh, out unless you can find a card that's cut in half or something. I think there might be some out there that, that are. So maybe we should look at uh, doing a review on one of those in the future. Uh, you got a Kensington lock here to prevent theft. So you can lock it down on a desk. USB 2.0 on this side. This is configured identically to all those other uh, sub $200 laptops that we've looked at over the last couple of weeks. Uh, headphone microphone jack here as well as a volume rocker. And there is a little webcam up top for making Skype calls and that kind of thing as well. So pretty much a, a basic run-of-the-mill N3050 laptop, although uh, you have the added bonus here of the touchscreen and the two-in-one capability uh, at the expense of junkware and battery life. That's kind of your trade-off on uh, this one. So now let's see how it performs. The spoiler is it will perform about the same as all the other ones we've looked at, but we're going to put it through its paces anyhow with Microsoft Word, some web browsing, and a couple of games. Let's have a look. All right, let's take a look at the Edge browser here. We're gonna load up my YouTube channel. I do recommend using Edge for YouTube and other video playback over other browsers. You can see my video I just made on this topic to know why. 
Uh, so we're going to go onto my page here. You can see it does come up pretty quickly. Uh, the video starts up uh, without a hitch here and is playing back quite nicely. I'll go uh, switch it into 1080p mode as we're doing here already. I'll go full screen with it so we can see how fast things run on there. Uh, and like the other laptops we've seen in this class, it does with the Edge browser 4K video as well as 1080p 60 video quite well. Uh, it will scale it down, of course, to the screen size. Uh, but really the Edge browser has the best performance in those videos uh, versus Firefox or Chrome. And again, you can watch my video to get the full extent of that. On the Octane benchmark test, which we run in Chrome uh, to get a sense as to how well it renders uh, JavaScript and all the other HTML things that go on with web browsing, we get a score of 6,965. It puts it pretty close to where that Dell was that we looked at last week. A little bit slower than the HP Stream 11 and the Acer Cloudbook. Um, but pretty much on par with other N3050 processors. And another cost-cutting measure on here is that this does not have wireless AC as some of the other uh, models in this sub-$200 2016 line do. So that Dell we looked at again last week uh, has a, a slower AC radio, but it has a wireless AC radio that operates on the 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz bands that a lot of modern routers also run at. Uh, this one is just wireless N, 2.4 gigahertz only. So if that's important to you, another thing to uh, keep in mind as you're going through your evaluative process here. Uh, we're also going to take a look at Microsoft Word. You can see how fast our big newsletter template renders here on screen as we're scrolling through. Uh, so pretty much about where we've seen the other uh, models in its class, so not bad at all. You can, of course, resize things and uh, you know, make all your text adjustments there, and it will be very responsive in uh, doing all of the basics that you might do with it. So as you can see here, web browsing works great. Uh, as does Microsoft Word within reason. These are not uh, you know, speed demons here, but uh, for $200, pretty functional. So let's take a look now, though, and see if it can do any games uh, and see if it can be entertaining at the same time as it is productive. So the one thing I always run on these little laptops is Minecraft, and some do better than others. One of the problems that we've seen with the N3050 line of $200 laptops is that none of them, for some reason, run Minecraft all that well, although last year's models run it much better. So this one has the same problem we've seen on every single one we've looked at over the last couple of weeks. Uh, very laggy, so you get some good frame rates, and then you'll get this, where it just kind of uh, bogs down on you. I even installed the Optifine Performance Enhancing plugin here, and uh, that is also not helping much here either. So again, this is the exact same thing we've seen on the Dell and on the Acer. Uh, pretty much any computer powered by the same Intel chip is having this trouble. I have heard that I think there is some work being done on this, perhaps on Minecraft's end, but uh, at the moment it is still not doing very well at all. Uh, if we look, though, at a more generic benchmark, the 3 d Mark benchmark, we get a score of 1,441, which puts it in line with all those other N3050 base machines. It actually scores better on those tests than some of the older laptops do. So I think the, the power is in here to do better than what you're seeing. Uh, something's up with the software. I think it needs to still get worked out, whether it's drivers or something uh, related to Minecraft. That might be an issue. Uh, there is a Windows 10 edition of Minecraft that will run better, but I showed this version because this is the version that uh, everybody else runs. So uh, keep that in mind. A couple more things to talk about before we head out. This is not an IPS display, just a standard TN display. It doesn't look too bad because it is reflective. It does look a little bit better, but of course it'll pick up uh, gunk and fingerprints and it is reflective, so it will reflect light as you're seeing right here. Uh, the speakers on the bottom don't sound all that great either. They're on the bottom, first of all, so it's going to sound different depending on what, uh, what you're putting it on, uh, but they're very tinny and not very, very good. So that is the Toshiba Radius 11 and you're uh, paying a penalty to some degree to get this two-in-one at this price. So junkware, uh, low battery life, lousy keyboard, lousy speakers, but if you want a two-in-one and don't want to spend more than $200, uh, this one is certainly worth considering, and the build quality on it is surprisingly good for this price. Uh, however, there are better sub-$200 computers out there. I've linked to the current crop of the sub-200s uh, in the description. I'll also put a link to a longer playlist where I've got a bunch more of these uh, low-cost PCs. You might be able to find a few of last year's models for even less. Uh, but if you're in the market for a two-in-one uh, that's new from a major manufacturer, this is probably the best deal you're going to find, uh, at least on a Windows uh, version of these budget PCs. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.